Hi there, welcome back to the 12 Simple Days of Christmas. I am Kat, founder of The Simplified Life, where we help you remove the clutter to uncover a life you love. And I have the great pleasure to be here with James Victoria, author, artist, and creative mentor, uh, author of the best-selling book, Feck Perfection. Um, if you have ever had yeah oh look it you gotta uh, you need to come autograph mine though i'm still kind of I, I, <laughs> and, I'm, and i'll bring champagne yes you better dom <laughs> so james is going to be leading us through three simple tips to incorporate creative play this holiday season so james take it away um yeah actually kat the the, the first line in in that book in fact perfection says um, that we're all born wildly creative and some of us just forgot and that's it that's part of it I mean the the my gift my talent like I'm a pretty good designer meaning <laughs> meaning I can get into most museums around the world and I've had two shows at the Museum of Modern Art in New York True. you know so I'm pretty good um, but I've realized I'm, I'm much better I'm a much better teacher and I've also realized that my gift isn't that I'm more talented than anybody it isn't that I am certainly not that I'm smarter than anybody. Um, and it's not that I work hard. Well, that actually, I fucking work harder than you anybody. You work so. way harder. <laughs> yeah, let, let's be real um, here. The man gets up at 4 a.m. So my gift, my gift is that I allow myself to play. Like I allow myself to, 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 um, um, we don't even have time to go into this, but there's a whole the thing behind my work called the wrongest idea. Like I'm, we're all capable of coming up with the knee jerk, the, 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 the ready-made, the, the, uh, the cliche answer. Yeah. You know, my mom can come up with all of those answers to, to whatever, whatever question it is. Um, you know, how do you come up with to the wrong, with the wrongest answer? And that the way you do that is, is through play and through listening to that and allowing that to be the answer you know i present i present in commercial situations or you know i've got a gallery show next week the 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 gallery which is actually a um, a very nice restaurant they don't even know what i'm putting up because that's because i've built that reputation that they're like i don't know james is going to fill that wall i yeah it's gonna be fine you know <laughs> um um so i've allow i allow myself a lot of room um, and there are, there are some tools for you and for your guests that, you know, that, that we can, that we can come back to. And I do whenever I'm out with people okay. or sitting at a restaurant with someone, or just trying to kind of like, um, spur that creative spirit on, okay. um, uh, you want to hear? I, I am waiting with bated breath, lay it on me. <laughs> Tip number one. Uh, yeah. So there's a couple of just like tabletop fun things, fun, like, um, exercises, but okay. even within those fun exercises, there's a lot, there's a lot to them. There's a lot of, for me, if I'm working with somebody, there's a lot of, so I have to be like the, the, the therapist and the psychologist and the anthropologist and figure out why they're doing or not doing or what they're responding to, or, um, <clears throat> the fear mm -hmm. in even just putting a, a mark on a page. Um, and all this stuff is to things that you don't need any special tools with. You can use just a, a pencil or a pen. I always have a pen with me. Um, 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 and the, the first one is really fun. And the first one is, is um, that say if you're at dinner with, let's say you're at dinner with one person or there's, you know, six people. Okay. And so basically you get in, we break it into teams of two and everybody gets one minute of just staring into the other's eyes, Ooh. which is like, that's really difficult. To forget. But talk about how do, how do you get to know somebody, yeah. right? Without speaking. So there's no talking, it's just looking. So you look at, you know, looking into this person's eyes for a minute. And then you have one minute with a pencil and just paper with your eyes closed to draw that person. Oh, dang. To draw you're drawing their you're drawing their portrait and you'd be surprised how good how how accurate and how good it is that is so cool so it's like a one minute blind <laughs> drawing Fine. and then if you want to if you want to up the ante and see how it see how it works mm -hmm. um you can do the same thing and then you, you switch and the other person draws the other person looks but um if you want to up the ante you can do uh the same thing 
and then you'll do one minute looking and then one minute eyes open and draw. Oh, okay. But the, but the, the eyes closed drawing is always better. First of all, everybody's laughing. Yeah. That's the only purpose. It's not about making good work. None of this is about <laughs> anything right, anything good. It's all the wrongest stuff, right? Um, it's not about becoming an artist. You know, I do another, I do another little silly drawing test with people, especially with corporate. And I say, who here can draw? And they're like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you're all fucking liars. So I do this other really quick drawing thing where I take them through something. It's like a minute long. Okay. And I, I said, you see, you can't draw like Michelangelo and I can't either, but you can draw like Picasso. Mm. Right. Like I just get them to this point. And what happens is they're all just laughing. And th again, that's the purpose. That's the purpose right there. Just some levity, just some, first of all, searching into the other person's soul by, by spending time looking into their eyes. And when was the last time you did that without talking? I can't, a couple of years. <laughs> and, and it's hard for people to do too. I yeah. do it at workshops with people who don't know each other and boy, they get to know each other quick. Okay, real yeah. quick. Uh, so that was, that's the blind drawing. I love it. Um, the second one is one that I always use with my, with my kids when we're at a diner. Um, we go to a lot of restaurants where they have paper on the table, mm -hmm. um, um, or we just, you know, steal napkins or whatever. But, uh, again, just with a pen and the pen travels around the table. Okay. Who's ever there. And while everybody's just talking and blah, 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 um, it's called picture wars. So you've got the pen. <laughs> and you just choose somebody at the table and you basically draw a, um, a, a, a cartoon of them in some compromised position. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm at the diner and my son is eating waffles, I'll just make a goofy little drawing of the waffles eating him. <laughs> I love right? it. Okay. He'll go, Oh, oh you got me. Uh, and then he'll draw a pic, you know, he'll draw a picture of me on the toilet eating eggs or something, you know, this is like, ah. You know, and it's just, it's just play. Oh, it's not supposed to look good. It's not, you know, and I've got stacks of, you know, napkins from years from, and even sitting, even sitting with like kings and queens and having them do this, all the drawings look alike. They're all bad, <laughs> um, um, but it's just kind of a, you know, a fun thing to do. We take turns drawing, even just drawing pictures of each other. It gets you, you out know? of your head and just play, just fun. Yeah again just play or, or if there's like you know a mustard stain on the on on the napkin you can kind of incorporate that and turn it into something so um so that's uh picture wars picture wars okay and the third is something that's uh, that is a lot of fun and it's called um object improv this is the tabletop version i do a stand up version as well where you get people to stand up in a circle but the tabletop version and the tabletop version is basically you already have things on the table objects that you can okay. choose to just play with sushi restaurants are great because they have like the little that little piece of plastic um grass and yep. they have like chopsticks which we aren't and those short little spoons that we're not kind of yeah. familiar with um but like anything like right here i've got like the top of a poster tube that okay. could be something something that we say okay this is one of the objects and you can pass that around and it's object improv so everybody gets it and everybody has to basically um um prove not say okay like you, don't, you don't go you prove it you don't say you don't go i'm a pirate right you gotta. You have to prove that you're a pilot. You gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> arr, I lost my bird. You know, I don't know something Where's like. Where's rum? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or it's you know, or it's or it's Rudolph's nose, and somehow he's lost his red. Right, he's lost his his shine, or or half of Mickey Mouse. You you know, prove it in some way. Um, so it's just like using the objects and going around the table. And the funny thing is, Cat, is that the the putting it on your eye and going like. I'm a pirate. That's easy. The hard part comes when you get to the second level. And the second level is when you vocalize. It's, a, it's, the, it's the equivalent of asking people to sing. Mm. When you ask them, when you ask, <laughs> exactly. When you ask them to go, Arr, I lost my word. Or, you know, uh, I matey. Arr, arr, right? People are like, I matey. Har, I, har. They, it's really difficult for Can't them. To into... And again, it's just allowing yourself to play. So I do this thing. Um, with crowds of 4,000 people where I get in the top of them in the front of the stage. And I, um, I say, this is a test. It's a test of your creativity. It's a test of your ego or lack thereof. 
and a test just of your ability to play. And I'll start, I'll say, I'll say, you know what I'm going to do. Join me when you, so I get everybody to put their hands up and start swaying back and forth like this. And then I start and I just say, never meant to cause you any sorrow. Never meant to cause you any pain. Only want to one time see you laughing. Only want to see you laughing in the purple rain. So everybody starts singing, you know, purple rain. <laughs> and it's so funny because I can, I, can, I can do that. And I generally tend to close my eyes because it's really hard for me to do. But then I open my eyes and I look at the side when everybody's singing. And I look at the sides and look in the middle and there's people like. <sighs> and I'm, and I, we finish and I, got, I say, okay, if, if you couldn't do that, please ask yourself why wow. ask yourself why why it was so hard who hurt you <laughs> yeah really <laughs> i mean you allow yourself just a little fun you know uh so yeah so play is super important play is all about you know um, if we don't have play, then we have a we have a we have a we have a world of bean counters, right? Um, and the funny thing, Kat, is is because most of us forget that we were children once, and we still are. Play becomes hidden in our what uh, Carl Jung would call our dark side, mm. and our dark side carries play and curiosity, you know, and even our sexuality. So if you can't play, then, you know, if, if you have that ability to be free with yourself, it improves your relationships. It imp improves how you talk to people. It improves your health. It makes you live longer. Who I forget who said, you know, we don't, we don't get old because we, um, we stop playing. We, uh, no, we don't get, we don't, I know it. you know what I'm saying? Like, another one. <laughs> Google it. Know because we stop playing. Yes. Yes, yes. Is, is basically the, the 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 key, right? So play is such a, an integral part of our lives. It's, it's, and it's it's how we it's how we communicate. It's how we learn as children, um, and it's quite frankly the the source of of invention and innovation and um, um, and you know how how even uh, science and architecture and engineering moves forward. It's just through play. I love it. Okay, something keeps popping into my head. So and I know we're just about out of time, but could you talk just for a second about look at me, look at me? Oh, uh, yeah. Ah, just that's, a that's, bit. that's the key. That's the key right there. So I've got two, I've got two small kids. I've got um, um, Wyatt, who's six right now, and Nova, who's <laughs> four. And they teach me every day the, the, the most primal urge that we had as children and we should have today. We really should have today. It's been, it's been pushed into the dark side for us, right? Into that shadow. But um, it is the primal urge of creativity. And it goes like this. Daddy, look at me. Look what I did. And it's so great. And I, like every other parent, parent I just want to shut that shit down. Because I've got two of them. Like, look at me. No, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. And I'm like, fuck. Um, but I have to, I have to cultivate that in them. I have to allow that. Because if they can't do that, then I, you know, then they grow up and they'll be like, like us. Our inability to express ourselves, inability to show ourselves, inability for us to say, hey, look at me. So I have a gallery show coming up right now next week. And I have to, after here, I've got to go to the gym and I got to go to the coffee shop. And when I'm at those places, I have to go up to people I know and people I don't know and say, hey, by the way, next week, I've got a show at the Golden Rule. Why don't you come and, you know, and it's like, hey, look at me. Look what I can know that they'll say, oh, what kind of show? And then I'll go, well, it's good. It's kind of an art show. And I just sound like a freaking seven year old inviting you into the living room. Right. To watch my art show. <laughs> you want to play? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's important because yep. then, you know, because if I don't do that, people want they're like, oh, yeah, I would love that. That's the thing. Once you, once you, once you, it, you know, it, it reciprocates, it comes back to you once you put that out there. So it's really important to be able to say, hey, look at me. Because we all want to look at you. We all want to see your art. We all want to see that person's song or that concert or that play right. or whatever. We right. all want to. And yet, yeah, as the person putting things out there, we're like, I'm not singing Purple Rain. I'm not singing Purple Rain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I so, love 
Yeah, there was a very cute girl at the coffee shop yesterday who I wanted to say, hey, you gotta, I got a show and I didn't do it. And I drove away going, dude, what was that? What All was right, that? I challenge you today. If you see her. <laughs> well, I'm going look back. At me. <laughs> or I'm going to call on the phone and be like, look at James, look at James, come on. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much. Just to recap, three simple tips to incorporate play this holiday season that was blind drawing, picture wars and tabletop improv. And if all of that is deeply terrifying to you, maybe you just need to practice saying, look at me. Yeah, oh, beautiful, Kat, beautiful, thank you. All Thanks right, for this you. opportunity. Merry freaking Christmas. Merry freaking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Go buy his book, it's awesome. All right, love you, James. I'll talk to you soon. Baby, thank thank you. you all for joining us for another episode of 12 Days of Christmas. I'll see you in the next video.